So in this video, let's try to understand what is 3D array. So we have already done with one dimensional array, two dimensional array, and this is third dimension now. So if we talk about this array, so let's say we have int a, which is an array here. So if I say five, <coughs> so this, this array here, this is one dimensional array because we are focusing only on the number of columns or number of the values. Now if I say b with two brackets, this will be two dimensional array because you are focusing in two dimensions. So let's say if I say four and four, so in total, this will have 16 values, right? So it is four into four. Now if we talk about three dimensional, so we have to use C bracket bracket. I mean, you have to use three brackets just to represent this is our three dimensional array. And then we can specify a size, which is four, four and four. So in total, it will be 4 into 4 into 4, which is, I guess, 64. Is it? So it's, yeah, so it's 64. So you can have 64 elements here. So that's three-dimensional array. So how to set the value? So we can say uh, C of 0 on 0 of 0. So we can specify a value which is 7. So the, the first element of your three-dimensional array will have a value which is 7. Cool, right? So how to assign the number of values? So since we have three dimensional array, we have to use three loops. So if you remember when we, we when we started with one dimensional array, we have to use one loop. When you use two dimensional array, we have to use nested loops. So we'll be having four inside of four. For this, we have to use a nested for loop. In total, we have to use three four, three loops here. So let's say for the first loop will be for uh, maybe this will be. So let's assign some values. So let's say it's i it's i equal to 0 and then i less than or i less than 4 and then i plus plus so that's this this for loop will talk about this bracket here we require one more for loop for the second bracket so we have to say int j equal to 0 int j less than 4 and then j plus plus so this j will responsible for this num this counting i mean the middle square counting and then we require one more loop, which will be k, which will be 0, and then k less than 4, which k plus plus, and then we can assign the value. So we can say c of i, comma j, comma k, and we'll say this is equal to i plus j plus k. Now it doesn't matter what, what's the value. So what will be the value? It's just we are printing some values here. So once you assign the value, so you, this array will be full of values. Now let's print this. Now how to print? So for printing also, we have to use those three loops. So what we can simply do is we can just reuse the code and paste it here. So instead of assigning the value, let's print the value. So we'll just see us out. Uh, we'll not, we'll use a space plus the value of C of i j and k simple and now if you run this you will be getting all the values in the list format so you can see these are your values in total this will be 64 values from here to to the end cool right so that's how you assign the value to three dimensional array and that's how it prints so if you want to imagine how it looks just imagine a rubik cube Okay, that's Rubik cube will be the three-dimensional array. Now, uh, so can I use enhance for loop here? Let's try. So instead of this, if I try to use enhance for loop, so this will be, so it will be something with int, the value, the variable name will be i in c. But when I talk about c, so c is three-dimensional. So we, we cannot use one element here we have to use two dimensional because in one time you will get two dimensional array here we have to say it is int j from i but j will not be one dimensional sorry one j will not be a value it will be one dimensional array and here it will be int k in j so k will be value which will fetch value from j which is one dimensional array. And instead of printing c, let's just print value of k. 
So this will give you the same output which you have got in the earlier example or earlier loop. Simple. So that's how we have to use enhance for loop with this 3D array. So that's it from this video. So we'll, in the next video, we'll talk about we'll talk about jagged arrays in 3D. So thank you so much for watching, and do subscribe for the further videos.